Hello, James here from QSIS, and I'm here to tell you all about the latest version of QSIS Designer software, version 9.12. We've got new hardware, new software, plenty to talk about, so let's take a look. Firstly, let's talk about new hardware in the latest version of QSIS, beginning with the QIO Flex 4A. This is a new multi-purpose QIO product that combines flex channels for audio input and output, GPIO, and also a dedicated two-channel power amplifier. In addition, we have the QIO LVR4, which is a low voltage relay, more on the control side. In addition, we have a brand new form factor for paging stations, which combine with one of our TSC G3 third generation touch panels to give you a dedicated microphone and access to the UCI in a wall mount or a table mount form factor. Let's take a look at that inside the software. So here we are in the latest version of QSIS Designer software. And firstly, let's take a look at some hardware. So here is the QIO Flex 4A and you can see is pretty straightforward. We've got four flex channels and these work in exactly the same way as something like the Core 8 Flex, except there's four of them. So just as with other products, you've got the uh, buttons here to change the direction from input. And if you go to the output block, you can make them outputs instead. Then we've got the GPIO section. Again, very familiar if you've used GPIO on pretty much any other QSIS product. And then you have here this little two channel amplifier. Okay, so here this just lets you wire up um, audio straight to that. And uh, of course you can put in speaker processing here if you want to do that. And this is nine watts per channel at four ohms. It will also do five watts if you're using PoE Plus with this product, but you'll get nine watts if you use the uh, power supply connection, which is 24 volts, 1.9 amps. Now let's come down to the LVR4. So this is the low voltage relay and it's actually four relays here. Okay, now if we open up this component, we can see that we've got some controls here and I'll emulate this design right now. And of course you can see that you can press these buttons. Now these are momentary buttons inside here. Okay, so when I press them like this, as you hold it down, it's gonna open it and you let go and it will close the relay there. Of course, you've got connections for normally open and normally closed and common for each relay. And of course, you could use it with some other control components if you wanted to add some other way of controlling it. So for example, you could have a flip-flop like this with set and reset to turn it on and off and you can link the state to this relay control pin. And then of course, you can you know just press set and that's gonna stay open and you can press reset and you can turn it off. Lastly, we've got the PSTSC G3. So it's a paid station, but it's really a TSC70 G3 docked into this paid station here. Okay, so that lets you have the UCI like you see here, and then you can have a gooseneck or a handheld microphone, which is held on with a really strong and quite satisfying magnet for that microphone there. Now, the way this actually comes in to designer is kind of interesting. So you can add a TSC70, and now that TSC70 has a is paging station property. Okay, so for any TSC70 G3, you can say, yes, it is a paging station. And when you do that, it's gonna change what components you have here. So you see, I've got a mic control here. If I say it's not a paging station, then I have um, a few other components. And some of these are new, like this external USB audio device, which you can, use just like you would on other devices that have that feature. Now, of course, if I say, yes, this is a paging station, now I can get the mic control and drag it in. And just like the older paging stations, we can wire this up. We've got station audio, we've got station control. And if I double click this here, of course, you're gonna see the familiar paging station interface. It's exactly the same, essentially, as it always has been, but now it's linked up to the touch panel. Okay, and then of course you can set a UCI just in the usual way. In addition, we're happy to announce that version 9.12 delivers significant video stability improvements for the NV series video endpoints. Next up, we've improved network monitoring for core status blocks and also QSIS peripheral status blocks. And we've also made changes to UCI scripting and added some additional Lua libraries. 9.12 now shows you networking information that was previously only available inside Core Manager. This can now be found inside the core and peripheral status blocks. It's not currently available for QIO devices though. Let's look at notifications inside UCI scripts. And of course for this, we're going to change designer to 
dark mode because we're programmers now. So notifications are a feature inside the normal scripting environment that were not available inside UCI's until this version. And they're pretty handy. They basically let you do a little post or a broadcast or a notification from one script that can be received by any number of other scripts. And this can be any string or any table. And of course, a table can contain all sorts of bits of information. So here, in my UCI script, I've got a button, okay? And I've made a function called publish notification. And what this does is it goes to notifications.publish. So this is the new thing that's available inside UCI scripts now. And we're calling this UCI power. So maybe you wanna tell other parts of your QCIS design that the power has been turned on for a certain room, and that's coming from a UCI. So this is a toolbox control inside the UCI, so we can just access that with controls.button.string. And basically this means publish a notification called UCI power, and the string of the button is the data that you want to publish. Now in a completely different script, inside the, the main schematic, I've got a function called notification rx, notification receive, and this is gonna bring in any notification by name and also the data that it has here. And we're then subscribing to our notification. And you do that like this. You just say notifications.subscribe and you put in the name that you're subscribing to and what function you wanna run when it gets a new update. So we're saying run this function whenever you receive a notification with this name. Okay, so we haven't really implicitly linked these two scripts together. This one's just listening to a notification that this one is publishing. So now you can see, of course, that when we press the button, it says published here, and it receives here UCI power, and it receives a true or a false, true, false, true, false, okay? And we're then controlling an LED with this. Now, the great thing about this is there's no limit to how many scripts can receive your notification. So now, I've got three scripts and this UCI only has to publish one notification, but all of these scripts are getting updates. So these could be all sorts of different scripts throughout your design connected to whatever you want, all getting the same piece of information. Pretty handy. Of course, as well as all of the new features in QCIS Designer itself, we also have many new plugins from our technology partners in the QCIS Designer Asset Manager. So let's talk about some of those, starting with the new Shure Microflex plugin. Now this combines many older Shure plugins into a single one for many different Shure Microflex plugins, including the MXA920, the MXA710, the MXA910, the MXA mute control buttons, and a few others as well. With Sennheiser, we now have a dedicated plugin for the TCC-M, which is a smaller form factor beamforming ceiling microphone from Sennheiser. In a completely different category, the Elacoustics Network Audio Converter. So if you want to easily convert between AES and MADI and AVB with even quite high channel counts and have that be natively controlled from QSIS, you can certainly do that with that new plugin. Also, the Lutron Leap Suite, which lets QSIS integrate with a whole host of controls for shades, for lighting, and with some cloud software from Lutron as well. And then, of course, we have the latest version of the QSIS Vision Suite, which, remember, includes ACPR, Automatic Camera Preset Recall, and the Sear Vision plugin. Now, the big changes there are that we have support for the Yamaha RM CG microphone inside ACPR. We also have a new privacy mode for our cameras that works with divisible rooms in the Sear Vision plugin. So make sure you download the latest version of Vision Suite and you can see a few other smaller changes we've made to those plugins as well. And as ever, you don't just want to listen to me talking about the new version on this video, please go and download the new version of QCIS Designer Software 9.12. Check out the release notes for plenty of other smaller features and bug fixes as well, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.